Always great to have you, especially as we push forward to some of the big CPA data that we get tomorrow. How are you thinking about the path of interest rates on the back of what could be another big CPI report? Yeah, uh, hi Taylor. I, I think the uh, the the dominant trend here is this yield curve inversion. So if we get a strong number or a number that uh, you know exceeds expectations, especially on the month to month change in core, because that's probably what's really going to drive the Fed's view on this. If, if that's a higher than expected number, then the Fed you know is likely to continue tightening at a rapid rate. Market will build in 75 basis points going forward. Forward, and that drives up the short end, but then the long end will drag behind, continue to drag behind. And that's the uh, that's really been the trend that we've been in now for quite some time. We're at a steep inversion from two-year to 10-year treasuries. I think that that's likely to continue unless we actually see some easing in the near-term inflation pressures and we start to discount maybe a little less Fed tightening in the near term. But it's more likely, I think the, the greater risk is the Fed continues to push hard, we see that yield curve continue to steep, to, to, uh, to invert. And Kathy, what do you make of the signal from that curve? Are you more bothered about the three-month tenure? Are you more worried about how much deeper or how sustained it is going to be? Because it sounds as though we can remain at these levels for quite a while. Yeah, we can. Obviously, the three-month, ten-year is a, a more reliable signal, signal uh, of recession than the the uh, two-year, ten-year. But two-year, ten-year counts. Any yield in inversion counts. And I think my concern is if it continues to deepen and it goes more persistently negative, we'll start to see that feedback mechanism through credit and lending, and that will slow down the economy. But it also raises the risks in the markets, so particularly the riskier assets like high yield bonds. And Kathy, we've spent so much time, it feels like, talking about just interest rates and the level of interest rates in the past few months. Uh, haven't heard so much about quantitative tightening, you know, the Fed's balance sheet runoff. And I think it was the analysts at BMO who raised the point that, you know, even if there are Fed cuts priced into the market in 2023, the Fed might not be able to deliver them. They might have to stay at terminal for longer because they can't cut rates and also keep unwinding the balance sheet. And I would just love to hear your thoughts on that theory. Yeah, I, I would agree that it be, presents a real obstacle. So quantitative tightening is going to pick up steam in September as uh, as they lift the caps. And that obviously is a form of tightening. So it wouldn't make sense for the Fed to be cutting short-term rates and tightening through the balance sheet. That's going to create a lot of distortions in the system. So I would agree that that's a problem. You know, it remains to be seen whether the Fed's going to reverse course uh, that quickly or whether they try to get to a plan plateau and sort of stay there a while and let the runoff continue. But it's going to be a real challenge. I would not count on reaching that, you know, two trillion, two and a half trillion decline over the next couple of years in the balance sheet. I, I think it's more likely that maybe it comes down a trillion, trillion and a half, and then uh, it kind of has to end there for the time being. Big question coming out of our uh, sort of viewer questions that we're posing to guests. Does 6040 work still? <laughs> Oh, the much maligned 60-40 portfolio. You know, I, I know. I, I think it's too early to throw in the tall. So we have had periods in the past when you've had correlation uh, in price of both bonds and stocks. And it's always kind of come back and righted itself. So I think we've had six months of a big declines in the, in the bond market, you know, declines in the stock market. Everyone sort of wants to throw out the, the entire 60-40 portfolio. I think over time. We, we need to give it some more time. I, there may be better ways to go than 6040, but I think as a base case, it still makes a lot of sense. Where makes the most sense at the moment, Kathy? Where is the most attractive part of either the Treasury's curve or indeed if you are looking more in the credit side of the equation? Yeah, so we like um, we like investment grade corporate bonds. You know, you don't have to go out very far in duration to get four percent plus, uh, and that's still you know. Although we see corporate profits slowing down, there's still challenges on the corporate side. We think that that's a pretty reasonable return given our expectations for where the economy is going and where where the Fed is going. Um, so we like the investment grade corporate bond area, shorter duration. We like municipal bonds for longer duration. The valuations are 
are really attractive for higher income uh, investors relative to say corporates or treasuries. And then um, if you're if you're trying to work the uh, treasury um, market, you know, it kind of like barbells, you know, some very short term paper you can roll over as rates go up, some intermediate term paper just to balance out because of that yield curve inversion. So there's things to do in this market. It's just mm. a challenge. Kathy, I didn't hear you mention high yield there. We're not crazy about high yield here. You know, we're not underweight because it's hard to be underweight high yield because the yields are so high. But the spread is just, um, spread versus treasuries is just close to the long-term average. You're not getting a lot of extra yield to compensate you for the challenges, I think, that the market faces. So we have the Fed tightening. We have the slowdown in corporate profits. We have, you know, the global economy, which is not looking good. All the things that you've cited about, you know, the, the slowdown in demand potentially coming. These are the riskier, smaller companies, and uh, we just don't think the yield you're getting yet is attractive enough to go overweight and high yield.